Welcome to the Pro-Life Team Podcast. I'm Sean Zerke, and I'm here with Jacob Barr, and we're Stronger Together. We're going to talk about the National Association of State Pregnancy Wellness Coalitions and how we're here to support and encourage existing state pregnancy center coalitions or the formation of new state pregnancy center coalitions. So Sean, I'm excited to have you on the Pro-Live Team podcast again. Um, so let's dive in to the state coalition, yeah, the coalition of coalitions. Tell us, um, yeah, tell us where you are and how you've gotten here with this new, new venture. So um, first of all, my name is Sean Zerke. Um, I have been in the pregnancy center world since 2005 and um, having converted a pregnancy counseling center and um, starting a um, pregnancy health medical clinic organization from scratch um, and uh, all the way until now where I have a Zerke Consulting Group and one of the lanes that I run in is using my MBA in social entrepreneurship which is the business of nonprofits to help form state coalitions of pregnancy centers in a post row world. And so um, out of that, about a year and a half ago, my best friend and I, who is also a leader in the pregnancy center world, um, we said, hey, wouldn't it be awesome to have a national coalition of state pregnancy center coalitions? And um, we're just kind of dreaming. And then there are other groups that were also having those conversations. And honestly, since I am doing it every day, helping states like Tennessee, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, and the list goes on and on of states that I'm helping form their state coalitions. I just uh, created it with a conversation um, amongst a couple of us pro-life leaders. The problem is we're not state pregnancy center coalition leaders. And honestly, not appropriate for us to be in long-term um, board leadership because we don't qualify for membership of our coalition at, at a national level. But that's okay. We just got it done. We created the blueprint and framework to bring people along bo on board and alongside that were ready for this national organization. And so um, the National Association for State Pregnancy Wellness Coalitions was formed Articles of Incorporation filed in the state of Florida, which is where I live. And we had a founding board. And um, as of today, we have um, a slate of um, functional officers. So uh, the president of our national coalition is Jim Sprague. And he is the president of the board for the Michigan Coalition of Pregnancy Centers. The um, vice president is Lisa Maloney, and she is the board chair or president of the Connecticut Pregnancy Center Coalition, which coincidentally was formed in 2015 and formalized in 2017 as the first 501c6 pregnancy center coalition in the nation. Um, Secretary is Marsha Middleton, and she is the leader of the Missouri um, Alliance for Life, and uh, which is their state pregnancy center coalition. They are a 501c3 organization, and they do pass-through funding <coughs> for pregnancy centers. Mm -hmm. We also um, have for treasurer John Merwarth, pending his acceptance of that appointment. He had to get off the call. He got voted in. Um, and John okay. Merwarth is on the founding board of the Pennsylvania Pregnancy Wellness Collaborative, which is their state coalition, also a 501c6 okay. 
coalition that um, I formed for them. Um, then we have five regions and um, we still have some at-large positions um, of our uh, board, Northeast, Southeast, Southwest, and Northwest are still open board positions. But the Midwest director on the board is Savannah Martin, who is the um, director of the Ohio Coalition of Pregnancy Centers, leading 123 pregnancy centers in a very um, wow. tight, cohesive, informal coalition. They have not formalized yet, um, as far as the IRS is concerned. And they have five regions okay. in their state. So, um, and I was the president of the forming board, but now I am the um, executive director of the National Coalition. So um, that's where we're at right now. We are, um, our meeting today that we had coincidentally um, included uh, Heartbeat and CareNet uh, as they're getting calls all the time from state pregnancy center directors uh, in various states about either forming a coalition, what do I do, help give me advice, what are other states doing? And so they really want to see this happen. So would you like me to tell you what this national coalition would love to be able to do? Yes. Yep. That's uh, one of the questions I'd like to have covered. So yeah, go, go ahead and keep going. This is really good. Um, yeah. So what are the, yeah. What are the highlights of what, yeah, what are the current goal lines or directions you would like to go with this? So number one, of is, can you say that to the name one more time? It was national, the national see, it was association the, uh, of state pregnancy wellness coalitions of state wellness. NAS PWC. Okay. <laughs> And it is, Perfect. the website is www.naspwc.org. And the email address that you can reach me at is admin at naspwc.org. Okay, perfect. Um, so we are really interested in encouraging state coalitions to uh, form. In this post-war row era, excuse me, after the Dobbs decision and the fight has gone to the state. And honestly, this isn't new to states. This is just new to some states because um, mm -hmm. the deceptive advertising um, practices accusation um, was uh, codified in Connecticut um, a while ago and so they're up against that you already know what is supposed to go into effect in colorado on october 1st which is um that apr cannot be conducted by well that it's just you can't do apr uh, abortion pill reversal with the exception of one uh clinic bella and uh and they're in denver so bottom line is there's a very coordinated effort across the nation to um, shut down help for mothers and babies who uh, are in need. And there hasn't been this huge coordinated effort, uni unified coordinated effort to address the needs that women have facing an unplanned pregnancy. Because whether your state has banned abortion or limited access to abortion or has unlimited access to abortion, the reasons that a woman would even seek an abortion don't change. They are either in school and think they can't finish. They are in an abusive relationship. They may be addicted to drugs. They already have other children and can't afford childcare. They lack housing or there's food insecurity. They don't know where to get help. Uh, they have no mentorship. There's, I mean, the list goes on and on. That's why her plan is so amazing because of how they um, develop their directory uh, to cover all those areas of need. Um, 
but a national association of state pregnancy wellness coalitions can really help with that unified message. Right now, um, our treasurer, John Murworth, just said today, and he made this great point, that there's definitely a public relations campaign for uh, pregnancy centers, but it's run by Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is out there telling the world what they want the world to think pregnancy centers are. Pregnancy centers do not have that type of coordinated messaging to really inform lawmakers and the general public um, and businesses of what pregnancy centers do across the nation. And that's one of the very first things that needs to happen. Savannah Martin, who is over our entire Midwest of the National Coalition, she also leads the Ohio uh, Coalition. She made a really good point um, at the CareNet conference on a panel discussion about coalitions. And she said, pregnancy centers are only as strong as their weakest center. And the weakest center that is not following standards, that is, I'm not even gonna name the things that we see happen, but it, the problem is, is if CNN finds that weakest link and uses them as an example of what pregnancy centers are, and we can't have that. States need to come around all of the pregnancy centers, small, rural, um, limited funding, um, maybe they're dabbling in medical, uh, the medical side of things, and they need guidance, they need standards. This is where state pregnancy center coalitions can come alongside those leaders and shore them up with um, mentorship, relationship, confidants, uh, standards. They can share their best practices. Heartbeat and CareNet and NIFLA are all there to help as well, but having your peer, another CEO or executive director at another center in your state come alongside you is even more powerful and helpful and often less costly, to be frank. Um, so the par our purpose is multifaceted. We want empowerment and support. I mean, at the core, we aim to empower state pregnancy wellness coalitions by providing lobbying training and support. We truly understand that effective public policy and legislation can make a significant difference in the lives of the women and the families and the babies that are served by these pregnancy centers in every state. So we want to offer public relations, media training, unified messaging source that accurately represents pregnancy help organizations um, in all of our state coalitions. And it's this cohesive approach that will enhance the, and influence the reach of each of the state coalitions at their state level. Um, so to talk a little bit more about policy advocacy and legislative support, we want to offer some nuanced policy interpretation when um, legislation is proposed in various states. We want to be able to have the state coalitions propose appropriate policy language to lawmakers in their state that um, they can find common ground with. And honestly, we want them to be able to explore funding options at the state level in states where they can make some headway with that. We really do recognize the importance of protecting local groups um, while advancing pregnancy wellness initiatives. So we want uh, to provide expertise and recommendations um, on the eight alternatives to abortion funding, temporary assistance for needy fam families, TANF funding. Um, and we really want to proactively address and defend the accusations of misleading advertising tactics and allegations related to fake clinics. So the way to do that is encourage state coalitions to form 
give them that supportive framework at the national level um, and be that resource for each of the state coalitions. Wow. So it sounds like one was one of them lo a lobbyist that might be at the federal level or maybe supporting local state lobbyists. Does that was that one of those? Or yes, lobbying support advocacy, okay. legislative advocacy. So yes, um, when I help form state coalitions, part of the package of hiring me to form your 501c6 that I do out of my consulting group um, is that I give lobbying training. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and also, I really like the fact that, you, you know, when it comes to the having state coalitions formed where we currently either have no state coalition in a state, or maybe there's one that's struggling perhaps, or maybe not um, healthy or growing, because it, it, it seems like the state coalition would be the best player to know the other, to know the clinics within their state and be able to provide really excellent advice on how to best spend um, grant money as well as, you know, essentially connecting pregnancy clinics with these funding sources in a way that doesn't compromise their ability to provide service and care and, and also to, to grow with additional funds. It seems like there's this opportunity here uh, for understanding funds as well as um, knowing how to spend funds well versus maybe yeah, it being so a political game. We have several um, coalition members, including our new secretary of the National Coalition, Marsha Middleton, as a 501c3 pass-through funding um, coalition for their state pregnancy centers. They are great when it comes to being a resource for other states that want to form as a C3 and uh, be able to manage that funding. Uh, a new one who was just granted that access um, was the West Virginia Pregnancy Center Coalition. And so they just won the bid to be the pass-through funding organization for their state pregnancy centers uh, for those newly appropriated funds. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the types of coalitions we'd love to encourage formation of yeah. um, and what, what differences that there are that are currently out there. That sounds great. Yeah, let's go so, over the different types. Okay. okay, so the first is an alliance for combined action, which includes lobbying or group buying power um, that fosters relationship building among its members as well. So not only is it legislative um, advocacy, but also leader and uh, organization building kind of goes to that whole um, statement or, or idiom that a rising tide lifts all ships. So if you can really identify the leaders that are new in your state and pair them with mentors that are seasoned and experienced and really successful in uh, donor development and leadership and expanding their services or really being able to match their services to the needs of their community so they aren't um, getting caught up in mission drift. Uh, so those are the relationships that we'd love to see in, and it's either as a 501c6 or an informal coalition that has a lot of active members. Um, the next would be a formal 501c3 um, coalition specifically for networking purposes within a state. Um, another would be an informal but active coalition consisting of at least five pregnancy help organizations, maternity homes, uh, and or adoption agencies that are in a particular state or region, um, but are regularly meeting and um, are very active. So in, in that second one, the 501c3, ideally they are also a pass-through funding organization in the state, but they may or may not be. Um, we, we really don't want to endorse a coalition that's merely a directory only website that lists all the pregnancy centers in the state. Um, and organizations that are just funding distribution entities without active networking um, or a div their division of a state government 
um, or groups, uh, small gatherings of fewer than five organizations probably wouldn't count as well. Ideally, we would like to work towards entire states being unified into one coalition, um, of formalized in some way. That's definitely. So would a state goal. have a purpose for both a pass through 501c3 slash networking alliance of group or group as well as the 501c6 or, you know, is there a need for more than one entity type per state or is it ideal to have so, one entity per state? So you can have a, um, a parent child relationship uh, with a firewall in between. Um, okay. But typically a 501c6 doesn't administer state granted funds. Uh, a 501c3 would, um, but you could have um, a child corporation that is a, a different entity type. Okay, so one entity could include both types by being, you know, there's there's a parent umbrella and then a, a child organization underneath it. With the C3? And they share or the, a couple is there, is of board there, members. Okay. Yeah. So would the C3 it, it, be it, the parent so, or would the C6? or? Uh, it just yeah. depends on the state and the organization, where they're at in their life cycle, where are funds going to move, how are funds going to move. So I can't really um, hmm. prescribe okay. that right now. Uh, it's very customized to some extent. But that makes sense that there could oh, be yeah. one entity per state and cover the different purposes that are sometimes limited to certain entity types, because one entity could include additional entity of a different type in order for certain functions. That makes, that seems to make sense. Um, so if, if your problem is legislative issues and attacks and so laws, attacks, lack of funding, and you want to be in the legislature protected in a 501c6, form a 501c6. When you are successful in your state, I'm not going to say if, but when you are successful, you can transform your six to a three and become that pass through entity. You can never mm. go back to being a C6, however, once you become a C3. Okay. And it has to do with the assets and perpetuity um, issue. So for those so, who are listening, yeah, so if so, let's say there's a pregnancy clinic listening. Um, how, what questions should she be considering as she's thinking about the coalition of coalitions? Let's say we have a director who's listening and she's thinking, you know, how might this affect my clinic? What questions should I be asking or looking into to see, you know, you know how this will affect what you know what I'm doing in my county? So. Um... I have a list of questions. Let me bring them up. <laughs> You're so organized. <laughs> wow. Very good. I would already have it, should, had I, it I, loaded. <laughs> Are you really surprised? Yeah. Come on. Not really. No. I figured you would have had a PowerPoint ready to just kidding. <laughs> you probably do hey. have a PowerPoint ready to go. <laughs> Almost. So, um, so the first questions you want to ask yourself as a pregnancy center leader in your state about what type or whether you need to form a coalition is first, are the pro-life organizations in your state representing the interests of pregnancy health organizations, maternity homes, and or adoption agencies? So about 70% of the responses I get when I ask this question are no, I don't feel it right to lie for family values or other are really getting what pregnancy centers do. Or maybe sometimes they do, but then they're saying things that have nothing to do with us and then they end up not really representing what pregnancy centers need. Um, they're certainly not delivering the message of what we do every day to counter the PR campaign that Planned Parenthood and, and the like have about what they want the world to believe pregnancy centers are. 
So then, however, there are some states where these other organizations are cheering on pregnancy centers to form a state coalition so that when their right to life, their state right to life, their state fam family values, their uh, state Catholic conference and so on are registering positions on bills as lobbyists that your state coalition of pregnancy centers are now adding an additional position on a bill there. You've got another person, another entity representing all the pregnancy centers in the state now sitting at the table with lawmakers and your constituency is represented. You have a voice uniquely for pregnancy centers. So let me jump in for question. a moment. Okay, go ahead. Well, before we go to the next one, would the 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 coalition of coalitions uh, lobbyist or the the spokesperson would that person then engage at the local state level in that dialogue, or would there actually be a unique person that's different for that state? Ideally, there's a board chair or a hired executive director for the state coalition. Each state is different in um, their composition and their budget. Um, but yeah. the national coalition would want to come alongside them and give them media training and talking points and shore them up. Uh, not to come and okay. step in front of any state at all, but more to be behind in the shadows. Um, encouraging them, guiding them, being a resource for them at the national level. Okay. So it's like, so the local state would have a local champion whose wingman would be at the uh, well, national level providing support and resources. So essentially there's a very strong wingman, but the, but the main champion in that state would be the local person who is completely, um, uh, informed about local, you know, the local state level and the support person would be more of like standards and national level advice, it sounds like, or, yes. you know, knowing... so here's a, okay. another way to look at it. I can't, I have a master's in public health and health management and policy, and I was the executive director for the Iowa counties public health association which was a division of NACHO or the National Association of County Health Organizations. And so um, this would function much the same way. Um, another example is you have um, the National Association for Public Health and then you have state public health associations. Uh, so you have, uh, the National Association of Governors, right? And each governor governs their state. So the National Association um, brings those leaders together to give them policy advice, um, help with all of their state infrastructure, understanding of federal funding uh, opportunities and limitations and so on. So those are all examples of how this might function for this to support the state pregnancy center coalitions. Awesome. Yeah, let's go ahead and go on to your next point of, yeah, what, what a pregnancy clinic director might um, consider or think about uh, when considering this coalition of coalitions and, yeah, how she might want to, you know, connect with her local state coalition or maybe for, help, yeah, be uh, part of that spurring of creating one if they don't have one yet or growing one if it's maybe in a, state of needing to, to grow or, or build? Yes. So the next question is, do you have an opportunity to influence legislation and funding for your organization, uh, but are fearful of lobbying and impacting your 501c3? And um, so I, Sorry, I don't know if you can edit this middle part out, but my dogs sure. are barking. It's okay. It's an authentic podcast, so if we leave it in, it'll be okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, no, no worries. 
<laughs> hey, it's better than the chicken that I just had to shoo away from outside of my office. The rooster, I mean, <laughs> awful. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> you'd think I live in the country and I don't. Um, so many pregnancy center leaders um, haven't engaged in public policy and legislative advocacy because of the limits on that placed on them um, as leaders of their 501c3 nonprofit uh, organization. So um, if they haven't done that, then if they formed a 501c6 organization, for example, they could take their hat off of executive director for XYZ Pregnancy Center, which is a 501c3, and then step into their role as a member of their 501c6 state coalition and they can lobby without fear as they represent their 501c6 wow um yes and so it so sounds then, like they probably would want to keep that 501c6 and have a 501c3 as well possibly more so than just converting it just because they would be able to lobby every single no. state is different every single state is different okay. where they're at with um, laws and um, what their fight is currently. Okay. Um, honestly, if you don't have a funding opportunity to pass through, there's a strong argument to not worry about being a C3 right now. Because yeah. if you're effective at the 501C6, you can convert to a C3, but you just have to remain that way forever. Um, yeah. So... The other thing about forming a coalition, whether it be a C3 and formal C4, C6, is do you want to create a mentor and mentee opportunity for pregnancy center directors in your state? Do you want hmm. to shore up other leaders? Do you have um, a set of very new young leaders and a set of um, leaders that have been doing it for 20 plus years and maybe they lack a succession plan, but they can pass on their knowledge. And so there's so many things that can be done that as a good. group yeah, in a state. And then the last question is, do you want to improve opportunities for health benefits and medical liability coverage rates uh, and other purchases for all organizations in your state? So as a 501c6 state coalition, you can um, look at group buying power in order to hmm. improve the um, expense the, or lower the expenses for all of your members in certain areas that you can negotiate group buys. What's an example of a group buy in your opinion? So several um, association level uh, organizations negotiate um, insurance coverage rates for everyone in their coalition that steps in and buys in that is l lower than if they did it individually one on one each organization. That makes sense. Because there's right. probably lower risk too for the insurance company to have a group. Potentially. As a whole. It's also a guaranteed sale. I mean, if you're in Ohio and they have 123 pregnancy centers and you decided to be a C6 there with group buying power, if you are, were an insurance provider, wouldn't you much rather have a guaranteed 123 buy into your group uh, at a lower rate than to worry about dealing with each yeah. one individually, even if it was a slightly higher rate. So, yeah, it's cutting down a lot of sales and uh, reducing admin. Um, so that reduces costs. Yeah. Um, which makes a lot of sense. That's probably if my, if I had a ballpark it, I would say that's like a 15 to 20% discount just on admin and sales work. That, and I maybe, mean, there's things not, like, but... Yeah. I mean, what are you using for um, banquet planning or are, do you have a whole state that is being accused of being a fake clinic? Maybe you're looking at triple HC mm. accreditation. So can you co-op that as a state coalition uh, to some extent? Some oh. are very individualized, but um, you know, there are things that you can do for your s state coalition members in bulk that, um, Maybe you can negotiate a coalition price contract with Stericycle or Medline or the CDD. 
These are all expenses yeah, and, that pregnant women or leaders are used to having. And it also seems like it would make sense that if there was a uh, an attack on the whole, having representation for the whole would be more efficient than having representation multiplied by the number of parties. And so there's also room for more streamlined um, representation that an insurance company might have to provide in response to an attack. So that would also True. have economy of scale applied. Yeah, that's good stuff. So out of the, you know, out of the states, um, uh, you know, what, what amount of states are maybe don't have a state coalition that would fall into these different categories or which ones or how many might have um, state coalitions that are in a, in a position where they need um, life support or growth or maybe um, rehoning into the pregnancy clinic space. Maybe they've gotten, maybe they've had mission, mission, uh, uh, sh you know, their mission has shifted and, it, you know, essentially need to sort of refresh back to, um, yeah, you know, standards that are more common amongst the, as a whole. So um, there are, I don't have my list, of, or I'll tell you exactly who I believe they are. Okay. There are at least 18 states that are not formal or they may need to consider becoming a 501c6 or they have no coalition at all currently in the US. Um, there are probably more, but there are for sure 18. Okay. Um, but there are over 25 formalized coalitions of some kind, whether they be regularly active in meeting, uh, they're a C3 or a C6. Awesome. I also, I could imagine a coalition of coalition providing um, sort of like with the messaging idea of you know, providing messaging that could then be provided to all the coalitions when it comes to graphics or something that, you know, having an economy of scale take place where someone can receive something and then use it locally. I could imagine there being other things that could be built at the national level that could then be recycled per state. And I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for recycling really good pieces per state when there's pieces that can be recycled or they're evergreen amongst every state or they're usable by every yes. state. And so there feels like there's a really great opportunity for, um, for raising the quality of something because you can, you know, and then because, because it's going to get used many times across the country. Um, and there's, yeah, probably room for some great economy of scale um, by, yeah, supporting so many state coalitions with pieces that can be used at a variety or several or all. Well, and you know, from the marketing side that unified messages heard over and over and over and over change thinking. And that's the one thing that pregnancy centers haven't had is statewide unified messaging as well as national unified messaging hmm. and yeah. there are many ancillary organizations out there fighting for pregnancy centers but their focuses are this and pregnancy centers or this and women and babies and mom moms um but nothing has been uniquely to pregnancy centers in um, at a national unified message um, that in this post row area era, I think that we're just getting momentum. Um, some of the national organizations like Heartbeat and CareNet and NIFLA, um, they are great resources for when you um, are in the day-to-day -day at the pregnancy center level. But, um, and I know that they want to see 
state coalitions formed and a national coalition supported um, for things that they aren't doing. Not because they can't, they won't, but it's that it's not their lane. Yeah. And it's interesting that, um, well, CareNet and Heartbeat were, I believe, both created in response to, to Roe. I know that Heartbeat was, and I believe CareNet probably was as well in direct response to Roe. And it's also interesting that here we are a few years after Dobbs, and you know, Roe essentially took the fight mostly to the federal level, but then we, we still had the state level fight, but the federal level was the primary fight. And the state level fight was secondary because of Roe. And now that Roe has been overturned, the primary fight is now at the state level. Not that the federal level is gone, but they have shifted. Yeah. Yeah, you know, between first priority and second priority, they have shifted. And now the state level is the is the primary fight. And the federal level still exists, but it now I would say it's shifted into the secondary position. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, that's just me reflecting. I don't, yeah, but that seems no, like that's true. true. It, flipped. it flipped. I mean, yes, we would love to have um, abortion uh, eliminated at the federal level and therefore then take that back from the states. But the reality is right now, um, you, we don't have that. The fight is at the state level. And, you know, while they like to, I just saw a recent report saying that once um, these different states banned abortion, they stopped counting abortions in those states. And it's really sad that they're doing mm. that because um, chemical abortion, mail order abortion is uh, prolific and those aren't officially being counted and then if you layer onto that abortion tourism or border state abortion, um, they also aren't being counted. So you, the reality of what's going on and where the fight is still at um, is not fully transparent. So the, yeah. the, honestly, these state coalitions know better than anybody who is going across the border. Um, they can talk to marketing uh, companies like iRapture or Life Advancer Group or Choose Life or um, uh, Fila Media and so on. I mean, the list goes on and on. Sorry if I didn't list you and mm -hmm. you heard this. Um, <laughs> just coming to mind all the ones. But all of you can show what Google search words are high and hitting out there in various states. You can see where that geofence results are. And so you know where this stuff is actually happening. You know that in Texas, women are still looking to get an abortion, even though the heartbeat, the heartbeat bill has been on the books. Same with Tennessee. Yeah. So. Yeah. And. Well, yeah, because they can go to New Mexico or Illinois. There's border, there's borders that are, yeah, with different different rules, different laws. I would love to see um, a state that has an amazing governor and legislature that has appropriated a, um, a great amount of funds to look at possibilities for how they could really capture these women that are seeking um, mail order abortion online and eliminate it. Just say, you know what, our state's going to take the lead and we're going to um, invest in a plan to eliminate this nationwide. That would yeah. be pretty amazing. I have a couple states in mind that could do this. Yeah. Seems like that'd be. Um, I'm trying to imagine how the post office would would process, or you know, how law enforcement would process that. Um, Say that again. Sorry. Yeah. I'm wondering. I'm wondering how law enforcement or or um, a state could essentially prevent mail 
Uh, yeah, essentially, I, I I find it difficult to understand how they would prevent mail from certain sources because of you know maybe they could send it without having the return address. I don't know. It just feels like there's that'd be difficult. It feels like that'd be really difficult to prevent mail. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not nobody's sure. Nobody's looking at your mail. Yeah. So they they want to say we ban mail order. Okay. Well, these people are trying to kill babies. Do you think that they're going to follow your state laws? Yeah, I don't think. Uh, oh, I, not. I, I, well, I know they won't because I've, you know, based on what I've seen, you know, they're, yeah, the law is not. It, it's just, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's it's a hard fight. It's a hard one to. That's a hard one, but I feel like it still needs to be worked on. I don't. I, I wouldn't disagree there, but I would say it's it's a difficult um, problem to solve and it also needs to, yeah. But I guess before you can solve something, you have to get buy-in or, you know, you have to get, you know, approve the idea before you can actually then work on figuring out that and, you know, getting a state to, to have the buy-in to want and desire to figure it out is probably the, the, the place where many states are probably are at. I don't know. Actually, I, I'm sort of speaking out of turn there because I don't really know where they are at with that, but, um, but just in general, buy-in is important first before trying to get into the details of figuring out a strategy. Yeah. 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 Um, so state coalitions well, I'm really, yeah. um, have oh, go ahead. an opportunity with support from a national organization now. And I love the fact that the, yeah, the state, co the, the coalition of coalitions is made up of excellent leaders from state coalitions that seems like a really good recipe and that and also i love the fact that many state coalitions are made up of pregnancy clinic directors or pro-life leaders from that state that also seems like a good recipe um and yeah so i feel like that's you know it's really it's really sort of um empowering those who are doing good work to to really um to help each other um yeah, here we are. We're talking about it on the Pro Life Team podcast, and I feel like this is a really, a very much, a, I would call this a Pro Life Team effort when it comes to helping, yes, helping yes. friends with similar missions and the same vision, and you know, really, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, uh, all working together, um, serving Jesus, you know, not siloed, but working, working to support each other in this great mission of um, honoring. I. I babies that are in the womb who reflect in a unique image, the unique image of God and yeah. And working together to, to honor and rescue those who are, yeah. Being led to the slaughter. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest um, messages that we could probably bring out of our meeting today with the national association of state pregnancy wellness coalitions is the desire for unity amongst pregnancy centers at the in states and among states and yeah. if we can help forge that unity and unified messaging and shore up all of the state coalitions to meet the goals that are unique to each of their states and their state leaders that's what we would really desire to do at the national level yeah, and I feel like Marsha Middleton's group, Alliance for Life Missouri, to me, is a a gold standard or a beautiful example of networking at the state level with with pregnancy clinics and life minded organizations, um, essentially having relationship with each other and su supporting each other. Um, and I get to glimpse, I get a I get a glimpse of it when I go to their their state conference each year, but it, to me, it's a, it's something that I would like to see, uh, emulated and, and, um, replicated, um, because I think it's a really good experience. And I, f I feel like that's, it, it makes sense that that would be a good example. And so I'm glad that she's the, I think she was the secretary on the, on the board, which is great. I think that's, I'm really glad to see that she's, yeah, putting, putting in her, her experience to help, help with this. Um, so what are your thoughts on the, the nickname uh, Cola Cola or the Cola of Colas? <laughs> for like, I'm not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told Brandon I'm no. not a fan. Not a fan of that. Uh, 
Yeah, it's pretty touchy, but yeah. The National (laughs) Association of State Coalitions. That's a way of abbreviating it. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, Well, thank you so much, Sean, for, well, for really just using your, your, your skills, your, your talents, your, your wisdom, um, and really just going, you know, working on the things that need to get done. And while also, you know, connecting and networking with people who are like-minded and yeah. So I feel like it's, we're, I'm really glad that you're on our team as a, as a whole working to, um, yeah, just draw us into better networking and sharing more resources and ideas. And, and that obviously includes support, um, grants being distributed in a good way. Uh, that includes communicating with um, political uh, representatives in a healthy way. And yeah, just all of that seems really good. And, and I feel like this really represents, you know, the, the shift from, yeah, from states being secondary to now being the primary um, place where work is being done. And the federal level has, yeah, shifted the second, the second spot. Um, and um, a lot of work to I be agree. done. So, yeah, and I, I too really enjoy yeah, Heartbeat and NIFLA um, as well as CareNet and just these different groups that are working really hard to provide support and education and training and and uh, and supporting pregnancy clinics in several ways. But with the Dobbs, I feel like we have, yeah, uh, the needs are shifting and, and, the, and uh, the work has, has shifted as well. And so this is really exciting to see, yeah, a new, a new, a new entity form to support state coalitions and really excited to see state coalitions that are, you know, maybe they've, they've had their ups and downs, you know, seeing them gain momentum from, from other, other coalitions, as well as seeing coalitions that have not been formed yet, getting formed and, and getting formed with a support system. Like this is, this, this sounds really good. Yeah, I'm excited um, for when California decides to form their coalition. Um, that will be a massive, um, massive group with a huge voice. Yeah, that's. I, I'm I'm connecting with a group there called CA Alliance, um, but I, I believe they only represent a small percent. Like I, I would expect, it's like forty. But there's such a large number of clinics in California. Uh, if I had to guess, I would guess there's 350 or something like that. I don't. I, it's a large number, I would expect, in all of California when it comes to clinics. Yeah. That's just my gut talking, but I do know that there's. There's also there's the. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Something. Let's see. Right, the Life League of Southern California, who had yeah, they're they're a group that's been there for a while, and then there inter- internationalized services, who has been, um, yeah, since Sister Paula passed, they've they've been um, decreasing in their efforts a great deal, um, but yeah, they're also based out of Los Angeles County, um, but it's probably other groups there as well. I can't think of them right now, but. Yeah, I do that. They have a couple of groups. I don't think there's one that covers the whole. Well, yeah, there might be one. I don't know. There's a lot of groups there, and sometimes it's hard to keep track of all the groups. Um, and, and some groups are call centers, and maybe not really coalitions. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking of no, some. There's call some call centers, centers are that are state based. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, CA Alliance is one that I can think of, but I don't know. Yeah, what their geographic scope is within California, but I don't think it's all of California. Um, I need to find out. I just started connecting with them recently. Um, but anyways, well, so Sean, would you um, wrap us up with a with a you know, praying for praying for this new effort and with the hopes that those who are listening will join in? Absolutely. So. Um, if we look at Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more Mm. as you see the day approaching. 
and very simply is not neglecting meeting together is the, and encouraging one another. I just thank the Lord that he is blessing the unifying of leaders in the fight to save mothers and babies and families in this nation. And that doors would open, opportunities would present themselves, and that the Lord and the Holy Spirit would just nudge state pregnancy center leaders to either engage more fully in their state that organ coalition that exists, or that they would say, I can do it. I can bring a couple of my peers together and we can start forming this coalition. We need one in our state. And so Father God, I just thank you for your unifying spirit, your provision, the divine appointments that you're bringing for all of these relationships, Lord. And as we dedicate our work unto you, Lord Jesus, with you at the focus and as the center, that you will then bless it, Lord, and your fruit will be seen in Jesus' name. Hmm. Amen.
Our sponsors include Heritage House, Patriot Insurance, and iRapture.com. The Pro-Life Team Podcast is a ministry of iRapture.com. If you would like to explore making a donation or becoming a sponsor or have a recommendation for who would be a good guest on the podcast, please contact us at hello at prolife.team.